We've got my friend Dr. Cha is in the room because we wrote this paper. It's called the Perio Restorative Approach to Achieve an Aesthetic Outcome in Worn Dentition. We're going to talk more about the aesthetic crown lengthening uh, tomorrow, but let's just go through this case to show how Perio and Restorative can work together. Here's a lady, pretty attractive, not bad looking, but uh, we definitely have some short teeth. In her smile line, you'll actually see here in a second that she has a tooth that she doesn't particularly like that's still a little bit shorter or still longer than what Dr. Cha ideally wanted. He takes better pictures than I do. But there's that recession defect. There it is a little bit closer. It's not big. It's not a big recession defect. But if somebody's going to spend a lot of money on, a, uh, on some new crowned bridge work, sometimes a lot of people want the best, and she deserved the best. To her occlusal view, same thing. We had Dr. Cha lengthen the teeth. He did that himself. It's just a skill that he has developed uh, that you can all develop as well. Put the provisionals on, showed me where he wanted the tissue. From the side, you can tell that whenever she smiles, it is visible. It does bug her. It only bugs people after they spend a lot of money on this. They really they want it perfect then. That's it. Closer up. So we go through this again. That's two millimeters. Not much, but it's enough to bug you or bug her. You take two millimeters, you add one, you make a dot right here and right in there, just like we did in this slide. You peel back the skin, and what do you see? I'm going to settle the ab fraction versus toothbrush abrasion debate, debate right now. When I reflected that, I noticed that that was actually an ab fraction because it goes subgingival and ends about right here. I don't know about you, but I can't brush three millimeters below the gum line. So there is some proof that ab fractions do exist. I know not a, a lot of periodontists believe that, but they are, it's a combination. It's, a, it's abrasion as well as an ab fraction. You do your technique where you do a peri, uh, periosteal release so you can pull the tissue all the way down. That's all, that's it sutured up and that's me putting the graft in. That looks just like the other one that I showed you earlier. You'll notice here that the, the margin is not perfect. I always tend to overcorrect because what I told you earlier is that gum tissue will not stick to any kind of dental material, whether it be a composite, acrylic, gold, amalgam, it's not going to stick, so overcorrecting is okay. It will correct on its own, and let me show you how it does that. That's at two weeks. It's already slid up on its own a little bit. That's still just two weeks. You can see the symmetry now. And in the final product on the upper, you can see that the tissue blends in very well with the opposing canine, hardly any scarring. The color looks great. Aesthetically, she is very happy. Here's her photos. And there you are, right there. What have we learned? We started off today talking about the teeth and how, how to predict how much root coverage you can get for a recession defect. We talked about, and I emphasized over and over, how the inner dental bone level is the key determining factor in achieving 100% root coverage. If you have bone loss, do not promise more than 50%. If you do, you're asking for trouble. Then we talked about the possibilities for your patients. We talked about connective tissue grafts. We talked about free gingival grafts. We talked about alloderm. We talked about vertical translation. Obviously, after listening to me, you know where which side I lean towards. But you understand, or at least I've showed you the different possibilities for your patients that don't involve the roof of the mouth. If you guys aren't a believer in vertical translation, and I don't plan to convince you in just an hour, you at least need to look into the alloderm part of it. Because that is well studied. It's in perio journals every single month. Mostly I wanted to, you to discover the possibilities for you. The fun of it, the challenge of it, the service, the money, okay? I don't talk about fees a whole lot. I'm happy to if you guys want. I know from a, just from 
just as many of my, just, just like all of my friends are dentists, I have several dentists, friends that are periodontists as well. And I know if you're just going to do a single tooth, they're getting fees in the nine to $1,100 range. And that's in the Midwest. We usually discount the second and third teeth, but even then you're, you're doing half off. So if you did two or three teeth, which is the norm, you're still looking at uh, $2,000 for an hour and a half. One tube of bone, which is $110. A pack of suture and some blades, some anesthetic. There's no follow-up. There's no lab bill. There's no ill-fitting crown afterwards. There's no sending it back. There's no unhappy patient waiting with the temporary on that falls off on New Year's Eve. This, this is something that I think you should all look into. Learn to get the low-hanging fruit. Once again, I'm not proposing to you to, to try to do you know, full arch grafting procedures. I am encouraging you to do the simple ones. You could do these, okay? You could do these. You could do those. But mostly here, you know, it addresses a problem that I know all of you have. We have, a, we have, we have patients who have opted in for single tooth dentistry, and as a, as a result, you have asymmetrical smiles that they want you to fix. Wouldn't it be nice to establish an ideal situation rather than repeating the exact thing that they don't like? Why do class five composites anymore when you could do this? That's really it. In short, uh, like I said, we, I, I definitely think that uh, root coverage procedures have a place in every general dentist office. I, I believe that I have a place in everybody's office as well. But I think more and more we're starting to see the development of what I call the super dentist. You know, you're seeing dentists do Invisalign, orthodontic treatment. You're seeing them do rotary endo. You're seeing them do you know, advanced restorative cases that maybe 15 or 20 years ago only a prosthodontist did. You're seeing them get into implant dentistry, and I think next you're going to see them get into perio. Why? It's low overhead. It's quick. It's simple. It's easy. It's reversible. It's gums, and like we all have said and have been trained to say, the gums heal. You're not going to hurt anybody. You're not going to sever a nerve. You're not going to go through anybody's sinus. Most importantly, it's an additional income stream that you could get into your office for just the cost of a bone graft and maybe a, a few instruments that you don't have. Unlike an implant course where you have to leave the implant, you do leave the implant course of training, but you have to come back and buy a surgical kit. You have to buy implants. You have to buy prosthetic parts. You have to buy the motor and hand pieces. Okay? Not that that's not worth it. Not that that doesn't address an issue that, that you have. With, that, not that that wouldn't be a solution to patients, uh, problems patients have. This is just a way to get started now, getting a similar fee and doing a, a different service but just as valuable for cheap, okay? It costs hardly anything, just a little time and a little practice.